Mr. Sainath, you uh, have also spoken at the Progressive Writers Association uh, in Bilaspur, uh, that event. Uh, in a way, do you think that, were you surprised at the fact that the opposition, which is supposed to be the opposition, did not quite become the opposition, and yet there was an oppositional force in other spaces, such as, say, writers, university students, etc.? I've said it repeatedly, not only in Bilaspur, but a hundred places, that one, there is a severe, and this relates to that question of culture, there is a severe social regression going on in the country. India is in the grip of a serious social regression. Okay, When you have a hundred unas happening, when you have a government at the center going out of its way, using force and intimidation to make local officials say that Rohit Vemula was not a Dalit. After the competent authorities, the appropriate authorities have confirmed he was one. It's just the level of personalized pettiness and vindictiveness that is baffling. So I have been saying it a hundred times that the resistance to this, the resistance to the assault on freedom, culture, expression is coming from the poets, writers and students of this country and I guess a certain number of teachers. That's where it's coming from. It's not coming from the media. It's not coming from the intellectuals of the, the tame and captive intellectuals of the think tanks. It's coming from, although think, you know, the brilliant guys, the knobs who know everything, they're on the side, they're on the side of the evil, they're on the side of the atrocities, they're on the side of the diminishing space for freedom. Whereas students, uh, JNU of course, let's not forget Film Television Institute of India. Yeah, yeah. Jadavpur. I mean, how many places they've stood up and I say that the students and the writers and artists of this country are fighting for your freedom and mine. We need to recognize this. We need to be inspired by them. So you had mentioned about uh, Chinese Kanjipuram silk. So what about uh, the rumors around Chinese plastic rice, plastic eggs? Is it for real that, these, that they're exporting these plastic food products? You know, if I had, if I had a rupee for every conspiracy theory that <laughs> Hindutva Vadis and RSS have floated, we'd erase the national debt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the Chinese are no angels; they are driven by self-interest. My God, at least they're driven by self-interest. We seem to be driven by no particular interest. We seem to be driven by stupidity. Hmm. Where you need to be looking at your self-interest, where you need to be looking at what I would call enlightened self-interest. You know, understanding how you need to deal with your neighbors, how to engage with them while preserving and promoting your interests. What are you doing? You're just shouting and thinking that if you shout louder than anyone else, you're going to do better. Look at the role of the media on this. Every night I put on the channels and I'm flipping through. Now I find that my flipping time comes down to approximately two seconds per channel now. Yeah. You have one, you have an absolute Generally, the standard, of course, there are the great exceptions. There are wonderful people like Ravish Kumar. But you have, the standard is that you have an utter moron who's screaming and screaming and screaming. I don't know how you can sustain television programming by screaming. So that's one. And then you have five other idiots sitting there <laughs> talking about subjects they do not know and places they cannot locate on a map. Yeah. The, by the way, I said it all boils down to revenue. Here is what happens. Non-serious journalism is a very serious business proposition. 
this idea of having five you know five idiots there instead of three Cages. having there mm -hmm. and allowing them to rant on things they don't know allows you not to spend the money you should be spending on sending out teams of reporters to cover something now let's say the uttarakhand flood hmm. uttarakhand flood dies down uh, is smashes uttarakhand you need to have everybody goes there for the first one hour gets in there shoots footage immediately comes back and for the next three months you see the same footage how many times did you see lord shiva going down in the river you know i think i think if i were lord shiva i would have serious objections to my being shown constantly drowning <laughs> yeah and um, and by the way that was shot by one stringer yeah i'm very happy for him because he made once in his life he earned something yeah and that was shown on every channel as exclusive right every channel showed the same verbatim footage as exclusive and you had five guys discussing it now the cost of sending a team you wanted to cover the flood damage seriously you needed to have a team station there for weeks yeah maybe your big crew could come back and come whenever the team called them who reporters who would look into what happened to the river what about illegal constructions what about fake embankments what about illegal construction what about the uh, 72 industries perched along the banks of the river this was the sort of journalism you needed to do but that cost money they have money make no mistake about it these are large conglomerates that do not suffer for want of money but it's much cheaper to have five people speaking bit for about you know 1500 rupees per appearance that night yes. and if you're very senior 5000 rupees or so and if you are a favored one of the hindutvavadi lobbies maybe an incredibly higher sum but it's still nothing the cost of it's a fraction of what it would cost to send a team and keep it there and report the issue properly that's why that that's a revenue model geeta it's called talk tv Yes. Talk TV is a revenue model. Yes. Talk is cheap, literally. Yes. Talk is cheap in more ways than one. Mm. Right? I remember our it's old entertainment of sorts. I mm. uh, no, it's not even entertainment. Reality it's it's money. The guys sitting there don't know a damn. How many of them will get you Uttarakhand on a map of old Uttar Pradesh? Mm. Yeah. And the idea of then what are they there for? you know maybe the only time this panel business comes alive which is the only time i ever participate is during elections when everybody has something to say uh i remember once you know and then or uh, five experts who will be the same five experts on every channel yes yeah so some of them are living in uh, mm -hmm. studios yes. making it i remember my old friend i was fond of him i mean I, I knew him I can't say I knew him very well but he was a nice guy Vinod Mehta one day in one of his forgetful slips said I tell you Rajdeep and the anchor very angrily corrected him saying I'm not Rajdeep <laughs> and you know who the anchor was right so uh, that was one another time Vinod got very angry by the fact that the anchor did all the talking and he said i say you paid me 5000 rupees to come here and speak let me speak <laughs> then i met vinod shortly after that in the airport i told him you know you were wrong he said why i said other channels pay you 5000 rupees to speak times now pays you 5000 rupees to listen and be abused by the anchor <laughs> okay that's yeah so that that is the difference in the In, in the technique of journalism there but this i'm saying this is a thing it's a revenue model called talk tv that's how it works you reduce everything you you're actually limiting the universe to your studio so why you don't find me much on tv panels and stuff i don't do things like that so i i do it in 
my interest in elections might take me somewhere but otherwise it's just it's a completely rarefied universe rarefied atmosphere and what does it have to do with the price of fish